Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and our lockdown content goes on interrupted bonus videos every day. We're getting on for 100 now, I think. And that's not all. We've also got tons of stuff going on on Patreon. Um, I just had to check nine items posted this month already of extra content, all kinds of things, pencil puzzles, um, Sudoku, crosswords, a numerical crossword. I mean, if you're interested in puzzles, it's a great place to be. And talking of community, which that is, uh, there's also the Discord community, which is mentioned in the link in the description under the video. So do, if you want, though, have a look at this puzzle as well, because this is promising to be interesting. This is called Slope Sudoku by Victor Wu, uh, who sent it to us. He um, says it's an interesting idea that he dug out again after a while. And the rule is that we've got uh, normal Sudoku rules, except that the boxes are irregular shapes. They're not the three by three boxes. So every row and column has to have the digits one to nine and each marked region. Um, I should call them regions probably rather than boxes because they're not box shaped. Now, within each region, within each run of cells in the region, not bounded by lines, uh, numbers must either increase or decrease. So it's like a whole bunch of thermos, although you don't know which way they run, anywhere that you can find within a shape. So that has to be an increasing or decreasing run, as does that, as does that. In that shape, I think that's all there are. I mean, obviously, these two have to be increasing or decreasing one way or the other, whatever the numbers are. So. It's only where there's kind of a run of three or more that that's going to be relevant. And that's the rule. Apparently, that's enough to solve this Sudoku with these five given digits. I mean, it's a bit astonishing, but then we are so often astonished these days. So looking forward to this. Do give it a try on the link below the video before watching my soul. I'm going to get cracking now. So how do we go about this? Well, I mean, I suppose... This seven is in a run of five, and that's therefore got to be going downwards. So six, five, or four there. Five, four, or three. Oh no, this can't be two, so let's take out the minimums above. But this one could be one, two, or three. So those are the candidates for those cells. It doesn't look a very profitable way of going about it. I mean, I could fill in all the candidates up here, but... There's a lot. There's, I mean, some of these shapes look totally useless. Like, there's hardly any runs of three there. Oh, I s okay. Yeah, that is quite interesting. Okay. I think, weirdly, there might be a kinship to sandwich Sudoku here in that the ones and nines are quite important because they can only go in certain places in the cell. Anywhere where they're in the middle of a run, they can't go. So this can't be a one or a nine in the middle of a run of three. And the same would be true of those going down. And we could shade in all those and these. No, that's not right, because that one is not one of them. Let's try this again. I'll colour them in sections, I think. So let's colour them green as I would in a sandwich if it's impossible for a 1 or a 9 to be in them. And I think then, actually let's do the given cells, which obviously aren't 1s or 9s. I think then we might, might have some idea where we could put a 1 or a 9. I actually had three runs of three, so I was a bit mean to that region. Nothing else there. So those definitely can't be one or nine. Look at column two. There's only two cells in it that can be. So they are one or nine, one and nine. Um, are there any others with just two? No, well, there aren't. don't think there are. If I'm missing one, apologies, but I can't see another one. But I did see this three. 
And I was thinking that has to have a one or a two around it somewhere. Oh yeah, and those cannot be one. Now, is, yeah, that is right. That is in a run of four. That's in a run of three. This one, I shouldn't have marked it actually. I shouldn't have marked it. That, those one or nines, those are risky. That's nonsense. So I shouldn't have marked that one. But intriguingly, it can't be a one anyway, because the one is looking at that. So they can't be one. So one up here is there. These are bounded by two and something. Yes, I see. And now the two can't go here because it can't have a one either side of it. So the two is there. So now four, you keep carrying on up. One, two, three, four can't be in one of these green cells because it couldn't be bounded by higher and lower. And look, four there is ruling out those two. So we can stick four in here. That must be a run up. So five, six, six or eight, eight or nine. One of these is seven, isn't it? Because of that given seven. Um, I was going to say it can't be this, but it can be seven, eight, nine, six, five. Oh, look at the top row. Where's two going to go? That two is ruling out all of those, so two can go in there. Wow, this is this is strange. Right, four, seven, two. Well, one and nine in this top row. They must form the bounds of that set because they can't go in the middle. So this is five, six, or eight, which doesn't really help. Oh, does it? Yes, because that... I was going to say it has to be the top of this run, but actually it could be the bottom. Oh, that's two. That can't be one. We couldn't get things in between them. Right. Um... Oh, this is just as bad as if I'd filled them in at the start, but I'm going to put in the candidates now, which are set five in each cell there. Now, what can this be? This must be three, must it? Yeah, three can't... Oh, no, three could be there. Oh, this is weird. It kind of... Yeah, yet another puzzle where I you just can't seem to think straight about it. I still feel I might be able to do these three if I was to focus properly on them. Oh, they, oh, yes, look, that nine has actually cleared up the whole thing. That's eight, six, five. So this is seven and nine here, and that can't work. Something's gone wrong. Okay, that was not eight, six, five, because I've just noticed that could be one of them. So this is eight. Yeah, where's three going? What am I doing? That's three. I don't know why I put in that as five, six, or eight, sorry. But I still think this is eight, six, five. And where does seven and nine go then? Let's go back a bit. Let's go back a bit to where we had the four put in. Right, here we are. That four, I felt good about that because it was cleared out by this four. This has to be a run up. Five, six, slope up, six, eight, eight, nine. That must be right. This one, five, no, it can't be five, because five would have to be on the outside, but it could be six, seven, or eight. How could this be seven? Yeah, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so let's look at the top again. Where does two go? That's still solid. Two is there, and that's not two, actually. Where does three? Three, yeah. Yeah, I said where do one and nine go? They have to be there, but nine can be here, and indeed it must be because the other way didn't work. But let's not look at it that way. Right. This still has to go up, doesn't it? So three, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven, eight. This could be five, six, eight, or nine. Now we've got a quadruple. That's better. So we get one and three here. That obviously has to go that way round. Now nine in the top row. Hang on. That should include nine. Right. Um, right, and this goes up this way. So 
four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, yeah, I don't know how to disambiguate much of that. In this row, I've got four of the five. Yeah, okay, where can two and nine go? I suppose anywhere in those three cells. Ah, this is, you know, it is messy. Now, is this row, this column was still right? There's. Now that I've got that two, I can conclude that those are one and nine. So I shouldn't have shaded that at first, but in fact, it turned out not to be one or nine. The shading actually is turning out to be less useful than I hoped because it's clear you kind of have, once you've done ones or nines, you can move on to twos or eights or whatever, but. So this can't be a two in this box. These are ruled out by the given twos. That's ruled out. So two is either there or there. Doesn't really help, but it's true. Um, three, two, one, nine. Yeah, I think placing that one and nine, you know, finally I've done it, but I don't think it's any help at all. Now one in this column must be in one of those cells. This is a strange, strange old puzzle. Now this one on the end, it could be, or it could be anything, couldn't it? Five, six, this is high, so it's got to be as little as seven, five, six or seven. Oh yeah, because this is high, this must be nine. That That is right, yes, this can't be eight going up. So this is the nine, right. So that's not nine, that's not eight, that's not seven. Five though. Yeah, I mean, that hasn't really established a vast amount. One in this column has to be in the bottom region, but I don't know which cell and therefore I don't know which way round it goes. Um, Wow, it is tricky to make progress in this. It really is. Now, what else could I be trying to find? Yeah, it's always avoiding middle cells. That seems to be the absolute key. So once one and nine are set there, where did two and eight go in this shape? Well, they, well no, that becomes a possible, unfortunately. So they could be in any of those four. That's not very helpful. Ooh, come on, come on. One, one, one. Where is one in this column? Could be there. It could be in any of those. Ah. Oh. oh, well, where's one in this row? Oh, hang on. Don't say I've ruled out everything. Can't be in that region with a one. Can't be there because of that one. This is not a green cell. That is a white cell because it's on a corner. So is that. Idiot. Right. That is one because it can't be there. So that's one. Okay. Um, yeah, that is still good. They must be one. Can we keep going in rows? That's not a one. That's not a one. Oh, it's there or there, isn't it? In this row. I'm going to pencil mark a corner one in there for this row. I'll just try and remember that that's relevant to this one's relevant to both the row and the column. The other two just to one of them. Okay, where does two go in this box? It's got to be in column seven and it's got to be on the outside of it. So it's in one of those two. Now that's leaving two here. No, two's not in that box because two in this box must be in one of those places. And two there. So two over here is in one of those two. 
This isn't really taking me very far forward. But two in the first column, actually. That's quite interesting. It's either there, can't be here. And there is a one in these three. So if there was a two, it would have to be here, weirdly. We've done the two in column two. In column three, it can't be here. Could be there. Can't be there. Can't be there, but it could be there. How about this column? Can't be there. Can't be there because one and nine have been used. Can't be there. But unfortunately, there are plenty of places it could be. So, but we may have some sort of X-wing or bigger forming. I don't know if it's going to help. We've got three possibilities there, two there, two there. We've got too many possibilities, two there, two there. No, not those two. These four represent the only places in their rows and columns. Well, they represent the only places in their columns where two can go, and therefore the only places in their rows. So these, oops, these are no longer two candidates. We can take them out of their columns and we can put a two in there for here and here. Sorry, it's on my eye. I hope it'll get better as we go along. I can still see with the other eye, so we're okay to carry on. I will just keep poking it stupidly. Now. That was strange. I mean, I don't know if that logic was right. It felt right. It was like a huge kind of jellyfish confining twos to four different columns and therefore four different rows. I wonder if any of it was even more extendable as logic. Yes, the only two that we can now place in row six is here. Okay, so in that goes, we'll take out that one. That gives us a two here. Um, if, if my logic is right here, then the two in this box, in this region, must be one of those which places the two here, actually it has to be there because of this two, so I can get rid of those pencil marks. And I think I've got all the twos in. How weird to get that done before all the ones. Probably just my way of doing it. Um, yeah, so now some, this, is, this should be a green cell, shouldn't it? Both of these should be green. I don't know how I've whited them somehow at some point. They're in the middle of something. Now, in this box, for instance, in this region, three can no longer be in the middles. Oh, it could actually be there. Oh, I see. That's why I whited them, because uh, we had... Sorry, excuse me for just one second. I'll blow my nose and be back. Right, there we go now. Three can be here or in one of those. That's irritating. Oh, all that work with the twos doesn't really take me forward at all. Sorry. Now. This can't be seven. That's not very helpful. This must go up all the way down, but again, all the candidates are available after two. Maybe we can do the same sort of thing with ones. Where are ones in this column there, one there, in this column there, there. Oh, frustratingly, in this column, they could be in any of these four. So I'm going to put the one in the corner of those cells. And then in column eight, yeah, any of those three. I don't think that is as useful as it was with twos. No, definitely not. Ah. Oh. 
but it does mean in this box one has to be in row 8 apparently. Yes, because of those ones, that's true. So this isn't one, so at least we get that. That's nine, that's one. This isn't one. <sighs> I don't think that got me very far. Um, one of those two. I have a feeling this... Oh yeah, look, we need two ones in columns eight and nine. Now, one of them can be in this box somewhere, but the other one has to be in this cell. Good God. So we get rid of that one and those two. And now we've got a little X-wing going on through those four. And that means in row seven, this is the only candidate. We can get rid of that one. Wow. OK, well, we made some progress there. This is such a strange puzzle. It's not, you know, it just doesn't flow very well for my brain. Now I know a lot of the directions, but how am I going to use them? Ah, oh, that's not a one. It's in the same shape as that one. Lovely. OK, so let's get rid of those ones. We can fill one in in those two cells. Right, so coming up here, three, four, five, six. In fact, we can place a nine in this row for sure now because it must be here because we know it's not at the top. Hmm. So we've got all the ones and twos done, so maybe we just need to focus on the threes next. Right, these can't be three because of that three, so three must be here. Excellent. Uh, there must be a three in one of these, and obviously that's ruling out those two. This three's ruling out those two. This can't be a three because of the... Oh, yes, it could. One of those is a three. <laughs> Uh, nearly went badly wrong straight away. Now there must be a three in this sh tag shaped region up here and there's one there so this is not a three. But unfortunately there could be one there or there. Okay. One of those is a three. What's that doing to this region, any of those could be three. In fact, that could very, very much be a three. I really think it's quite likely, but let's fill in the candidates because there are only four in each cell now. Um, wow. It's hard to make progress on threes. I quite like the idea of that being a three, because then this would be it would have a lot of freedom as a run up. Whereas if this end was the three, one of those ends must be the three because that three is ruling out those two. So three has to be at one end. And if it was that, that would put a three here. And as I don't think this is right, I'm wondering if we're going to run out of possible threes to put in. No, we're not. There could be one there. No, that's not right. If that's a three, that's a three. The one in column one would have to be there. And then this would be a three, which is not possible because it needs to be bounded by a two. Oh, that's gone in the box. That is not possible. So this is not a three. So this is a three, okay? Um, and this is a slightly more truncated set of possibilities. That can only be eight or nine. Um, these two can be any of five, six, seven or eight. Can't really tell yet. Although that's quite interesting because it looks like they both run down. Well, maybe not. This is mind-bending to me. 
messing with me again. Now that can't be nine, but that could be. Are the nines where to go? Yeah, nine, I mean, the original green shading we did was for nines as well as ones. So in this region, nine has to be here. Oh, I should have focused on this a bit before. In this region, oh no, there's three possibilities. Here, it's got to be there. Okay, so there's only one nine in row two to go. It's got to be in this shape, it's got to be there. Now this shape hasn't had its nine yet and all those are used up. Nine is one of those two. Um, and that puts it in, oh, we've already got it in that shape. Thank God, I thought I'd run out of a possible nine. Now, if it's in those two, in column five, those are gone. So this is nine, okay. So it's just this row row seven, and it's one of those two cells. It can't be there, so it's there. Perfect, nine there, nine there. That is not a nine. That reduces all of these possibilities to three candidates. This now is the only place for three in this shape. Excellent. Now what does that do for three here? Oh, it's one of those two. Ah, and that goes with threes there. So nowhere else in those rows can there be a three. So in this shape here, it's got to be here. Which fits quite nicely. Okay, so threes there and there. Three, 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 three. Three, ooh, I get to put in one more. It's got to be this one. Wow. And as usual, that provides no help at all. Totally useless. But it stops that being a three, which stops that being a four and that being a five. Now I've got a six, eight pair at the top, so I can put in five, take my tiny victories where I can find them. That can't be a five. That can't be a six now. Seven, two, nine, one. So eight is in one of those two cells. I mean, I've done all the nines, so eight ought to be a reasonably profitable place to look. But my old coloring system is no use anymore. I mean, I really, I think I'm gonna have to take it all out of the grid because it's just messing things up now, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think it's helpful anymore. So let's get rid of that. Now, where can eights go? I suppose they're a lot less constrained, unfortunately. They could go in the middle of a one nine. Hmm. I haven't quite finished with threes. That's still to be resolved there. Actually, yeah, I was going to say that does look like it could well be a three, but it could also be something else now. In this column, eight has to be in one of those two. Neither are made difficult by the rule particularly. But I was going to say one's in a shape that's mostly on the left and one's in a shape that's mostly on the right. And that would be very helpful, except that this other shape has an eight either on the left or the right. So they'll kind of go together as a pair, but I won't be able to tell from the number of shapes, which one has which. Hmm. But eight can't be here now and it can't be here anymore. Okay, maybe I will just do some shading again for eights to work out where they can't be. But I'll probably get the population wrong, unfortunately. Let's see. That can't be an eight. This central one can't be an eight, um, nor can that one. That one could be, but this can't be. <laughs> it's so weird, that can't be. 
Those two can't be. These cannot be an eight. No. This could be, so I can't mark that. Now, in addition to those, let's mark all the cells that actually aren't eights to my certain knowledge. Oh, this seems a very cumbersome way of going about it, but I'm a bit nervous to do anything else. Right, all of those are green. So now, eights can be in the white cells. None are actually physically marked. So sh can we reduce any of these rows and columns to just one? Or any useful pairs? Ah, maybe not. There's a pair there and there. So one of those, one of those. No, let's try one of those, one of those. So two from those, no, it doesn't make sense, sorry. If that was an eight, that would have to be an eight. That would make that an eight. That would make this an eight. No, it wouldn't, because that's already in the same shape as an eight. It would make one of these two an eight. I don't know which one. Um, oh, it just feels like there is some conclusion to be drawn here. Like these white squares. If that was an eight, that would be an eight. That would make this an eight. One of those two, so that. That's gone. The only one in column three would be that. That makes that one an eight, and that. And this corner and oh and here that's very possible annoyingly possible i'm going to mark them uh what gray just because that is one arrangement of eights that's possible now if instead of that one in this shape it was that one well that would give us this that in this region that would make that one an eight that would leave that one to be an eight they're all different so far typical that makes that one an eight in row two this one has to be that makes this one an eight and <laughs> no no, there is no possible eight in column nine. So that doesn't work. I mean, I'm sure this puzzle doesn't need that logic to work, but it does work. I'm going to mark all the gray cells as eight. And I'll be intrigued on reading the comments as to how you found a slightly more logical route through those. Um, but that was my route. There we go. I'm a bad man. I do this sometimes. I kind of figure out what must be and I go with it. So that's now a seven in the region. This is not eight or seven. That's five and six. So this is seven and four. Two. One of those is three. Hmm. Eight, three, one, nine, two. Don't know about that. Three, two, one, eight, nine. Wow, I'm still going to have to do some do some proper work, which is understandable. Ah, oh, this has to be a rundown as well. So seven, six, or five, four, five, or six. Basically, seven has to be in one of those two, and four has to be in one of those two. Now that four means this is a three-four pair. And this is a six, no, not a three, four pair. We've already got a four in that row, so that's complete. Border dash again.
But that seven means that one of these is a seven. That much at least I can take. And in fact, if one of those is seven, it has to be this cell for the run from eight. Okay, so that's a six. We get a four here. That makes this a five. That makes this a seven. This one can no longer be a seven. Um, oh, interesting. This has to be a run up and around the corner. Now, this can't be eight. Yes, we knew that because we placed the eight. Four, nine, one, two, three, three, five, six still to go in these cells. Now, this one can't be higher than that one. So, we can take six out of there and three out of there. Ah, this is five and six. This is seven and four, but I haven't got proof of which way round. Or have I? Yes, this can't be seven because that run wouldn't work. So that's four. They both work now, but this is no longer four. And this must be seven in the column. That's fixed that four, seven pair. This is five or six. That's a pair with that. So this is four up here. That's not four. The four in this region has to be there. That takes that four out, puts four in there. Let's get it out of the corner, because I still think I'm going to have to do some thinking yet. Oh no, that four that makes that a five, six there. This is a three, four pair, and we know which way round. Uh, who? come on, those can't be six. That can't be seven. That has to be six, in fact. Um, this is the last one in this column. That always makes it a bit easier. This is six, seven, and five there. Oh, lordy. How do I disambiguate these last few? Fives and sixes. Ah, this way. This this run here does it. Wow, what a puzzle. I mean, that is absolutely madness, Victor. What an intriguing puzzle. Thank you for sending that. But it really messed with me. I mean, what a video. That's, that's one of my longest for a long time. If you had a go at that one, and I hope you did, then I hope you did better than I did, and there's every chance that you had a good go at it and understood the logic of it a bit better. It's a real, it's a real intriguer. I have a feeling that if we get another slope style puzzle in soon, it may not be me trying it. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope that was of some benefit to you. And certainly, you know, logic circuits either fried or firing, and uh, that's the way they should be, I think. So. Let's uh, look forward to the Sudoku hunt when it comes out. And uh, until then, well, no, until tomorrow. See you soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.